I'm going to be multiplying these functions together. It's, um, it's really going to be velocity defined over all of 3D space and uh, also force defined over all of 3D space. So they, they aren't necessarily linear, but you know that if you zoom in close enough and look at one little part of the function, then it's linear. So I use these linear approximations, f of x and g of x. I'm just using one dimension to do this um, demonstration, but I mean, really, it's function of x, y, and z, but I can just use a function of x and do the one-dimensional case just to show this. So, so what I'm showing is going to be what happens when you multiply these two linear functions. Uh, what I want is really in the integral of this of what you get when you multiply these two functions. I'll call that h. So here's the definition of h f times g. And I, I'm going to want to integrate this h from a to c. And I've picked a. And c. These are just arbitrary constants for the sake of an example. But I want to integrate it from a to, to c. And actually, so the first thing I, I want to look at is just what what f of x looks like. It's just a linear function. So I've got it from, I've got a set to 1 and c set to 11, so we're going from a to c and we're looking at this linear function. And then g is what it looks like, uh, another linear function. Now when you multiply them together you get this, it's quadratic. This is h. I can put h here. Okay. Now, I want to know. I want to know how to integrate this from something like two to three, or, or something very like two to two point one, or something like that. A very small increase as you go from A to C. If you were doing this whole thing from like 1 to 11, if you're integrating, if you wanted to integrate this whole thing, you really have to consider that this is quadratic. You can't, can't get away with the linear approximation. It's something like this. It's not linear at all. You can see that it's, it's not a straight line. But take a look at what happens when we make the range or actually this is a domain that we're, well anyway it's the interval that we're looking at if we make it go from if we make the interval go from just two three we make it a lot smaller of an interval here's what f turns into well, f, if the function is still the same, we're just plotting a different part of it. But that's f, uh, g, or, okay. And now we'll look at h. Now you can see that over th this range of values, this range of x values, 2 to 3, it pretty much looks like a line, like a linear function. So... Since it's linear, really, all you have to do to figure out what the integral is from 2 to 3 is look at the center point. That's the average. And multiply by the length of the interval. And that actually gives you the integral. So let's just try doing that as an approximation to the, the integral of h from a to c where a is 2 and c is 3. 
So here's the center point, which would be right here. And here's the value of h at the center point, which I assume is the average value. Assuming that it's linear, it's not exactly. I should say okay. So it's the approximate average based on what the the, the value of h is at the center point. And then I multiply it by the length to come up with the approximation for the integral from a to c, and it's two point eight. 175. Now I calculate exactly what the integral is from a to c and it's 2.84 so that, I mean 2.84, 2.8175 they're pretty close so the approximation works pretty well and closer together a and c are so the smaller the interval that you're looking at the, clo the, the better this approximation is going to be. Now why does this come in handy? The reason is look at this. It's if you if you have to integrate this, there's a lot you have to do a lot of work on paper to integrate this from from one value to from A to C, from one value to another. But if you use this thing where you just kind of look at the center point and assume it's the average, all you have to do is evaluate this at the center point be between, you know, right between A and C, and then multiply by the length of the interval, and, you, and you've got your integral, and you don't even have to do the integration computation. So it makes life easier.